Hey guys, welcome back to the MATLAB environment. So first of all, today's video is introduction to vectors. And on top of the MATLAB script, I have put some information inside of it. So what are tensors in general? So sometimes you hear not vectors, maybe tensors. Your professor might call vectors, matrices, tensors. But it really depends on what order or what dimension these tensors have. So tensors are a general description of, let's say, vectors, scalar matrices. If you want to call it like that, it's a little bit more complicated. But I have put the most common ones here. And a tensor of zero dimension is a scalar. So it's just a number. And scalar is another word for a number. A one-dimensional tensor is a vector. And a two-dimensional tensor is a matrix. We also have tensors of higher order, but they are not relevant as for now. So we might continue with that knowledge to our first section, which is about creating vectors. So in the first line, you can see that I've created a variable called the first vector, and this is a row vector. And we separate the numbers of a row vector with a space in between. And if we execute this now, you can see that this will put out the numbers. And if we double click on the first vector, you can see that this is a row vector. The second vector, for instance, is the same or contains the same amount of numbers and the same numbers. And if we execute this one, you can see that it flips the row vector into a column vector. And we can also see that, of course, by opening this vector and you can see it's flipped. Can we do this a little bit more easily? Of course we can. We can define a new vector with this long name, the first vector transpose, and then pick our first vector, which we have defined in this line and then just put an apostrophe after our expression. And what that will do is simply take the row vector, this here was a row vector as you remember, and with the apostrophe it just flips the whole expression, as you can see in the result. So very simple, right? So if you want to access vectors, I've defined this line here, which is called access vector 1, and we want to have the third value of the first vector. And always remember, MATLAB starts counting at 1, so this should give us 3. If we execute it, and it gives us 3 as we have defined. And just to demonstrate it a little bit better on what happens if we access a vector, if we access a vector which is not in our range, just comment this out, you will see that it says index exceeds the number of array elements. So we just have six elements and we want to pick the seventh and this doesn't exist. So if you see this warning here, it probably will be that you try to access an element that is not available or you're out of bounds. Right, so moving to section number two, we use the colon operator. When using the colon operator, like in this case, in the first line we created a vector x, goes from one to ten. And, ah, okay, we still have the arrow, so I would just comment this one out here. Here we go. X from 1 to 10, and you can see it creates us a row vector automatically, which goes from 1 to 10. So very simple. We can also create a vector with a colon, but it goes from 1 to 4, and the second expression gives us the steps. So we go from 1, start at 1, and then go in 0.5 steps, 0.5, 2, 2.5, and so on. This is the second possibility. And of course, we can use the colon operator and then go backwards as well. So we start at 10, go in steps of minus 1 and stop at 1, which gives us this beautiful row vector right here. Moving to section number 3, linspace. With linspace, if you, again, if you don't know what linspace is, you double click on it and click F1. And this will open the help. So here linspace. And it says generate linearly spaced vector. And we have two possibilities. First of all, we can pick a linspace with two entries or three entries, where one and the second entry are the start and end value, and the n is the distribution between these values. So if we execute the first command, you can see that it goes from 1 to 20,000, but it only creates if we open this, let's just comment this out for a moment. It only creates test vec it was only if we go to the end 100 vectors. So we go from 1 to 20,000 
only 100 values as a standard. If we want to change this range, we have the third value as aforementioned. So we execute this here. You can see it goes from 1 to 20,000 in, in steps of 11. Like not steps of 11, you have to pay attention, that was wrong by me. So not steps of 11, it actually creates 11 values as a whole. So 1 included and 20,000 included. Just to counter check, we open this test vec 2 and you see it's 11 values in total. Now speaking of this, which is not related to vectors in general, but if you want to change a vector value, you can also double click here and change the value. But it would recreate the same vector and delete your change if you execute this file again. So just that you know, if you have a value, let's say not a number or anything like that, and you want to change it on the fly, you can just double click it and change the number. Simple as that. So maybe a small trick or hint for your future MATLAB projects here. Moving to the next section, which is section number four, and we are almost done with our video. So very crisp and short. We can concatenate vectors by using our knowledge. We have created vector x here. So vector x was a raw vector from one to 10, and we have z from 10 to one and minus one steps. We can now concatenate these vectors because the dimensions are consistent. And we will talk about that in a future video or later episode. So just take it as given. And I will explain you in a future video how what concatenation means. So just gluing together vectors or matrices. But you have to pay attention on how the dimensions look like because MATLAB is very strict when it comes to dimensions. So if we execute this, you will see it will glue our vectors together. So it goes from one to 10 and then from 10 back to one. And we can also open this vector and you can see the whole row vector is 19 elements long from one to 10, then from 10 back to, sorry, 20 elements actually. I missed the last one. So 20 elements from one to 10 and 10 to one backwards. And also keep in mind that MATLAB stands for Matrix Laboratory, as I mentioned in the introductory video. And MATLAB is specifically useful for matrix applications, which we'll see in later episodes and also a special linear algebra episode, which will come after this MATLAB series. So stay tuned for that.